I have the new Arduino Uno, the R4. Finally! I mean, the R3 was released back in 2012. What? Imagine that! In my case, this 2024, I've tried working a lot more with the ESP32. I mean, the Arduino was getting kind of old and slow. I'm talking about the 8-bit series, so the Nano, the Arduino Uno and the Mega. And that's why I was kind of forced to start working with the ESP32. But now we have the Arduino Uno R4. So can this replace the ESP32? Is it better? Is it worse? How is this compared with version R3 and R2? Does it have Wi-Fi? What kind of microcontroller it has? And so on. All that in this video. That being said, let's get started. Hey guys, before we start with this video, just a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. As you all know, I make a lot of PCBs and I always use their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SMD stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here I have the Arduino Uno R4 Minima. That's how it's called and that's because we also have the R4 Wi-Fi but we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, let's get a few years back and see what we had when we passed from R2 to R3. Now, this update of the R3 is not a big deal. R3 and R2 are basically the same board with some minor changes. So let's just talk about those changes, some brief history. Now, this is my Arduino Uno R3. This is just a clone because my first original Arduino Uno R3 got burned out a long time ago. So now I'm using this. Anyway, let's just talk about the differences. And first, the programming chip, because you know, in order to pass the data from the USB connector to the main chip, you need yet another chip, which is the programming chip. So for the R1 and R2, they were using the Atmega 8 to create that UART port, but then with the R3, they started to use the Atmega 16, so just a slight improvement. And then we have the reset circuit. Basically, the R3 adds just a diode in parallel with the pull-up resistor of that programming chip, and that just improves a little bit the reset process. And then we have the pinout. And when we pass from R2 to R3, they are basically the same, but they've added, for example, the IO ref pin, which is basically just internally connected to 5 volts. And that basically means that is a pin that will say, hey man, I'm working at this voltage, don't supply with more than that because I will burn out. And that's it. They've also added two more I2C pins here on top, but don't get fooled because this is not a second I2C port. It's the same port just connected once again here, basically the same pin of A4 and A5, but once again here on the top, so it's the same port. And one more change that we have is that they've moved the reset button from the middle of the board on this corner, and that is very useful, especially if you're using shields, because if you have another board on top of the Arduino, it will be impossible for you to use the reset pin if it's here in the middle of the board, so it's a lot better to have it here. That's nice. So that's it. That's the difference that we had when we pressed from R2 to R3. Nothing special. But now we have the game changer the R4. And this new board brings a lot of new stuff on the table. And here it is. As always, you receive it in a cardboard box. You also have a small user manual and some stickers. Basically, these are the same stickers that we have for the last 20 years, I think. I think they are the same. Oh, and by the way, you also get this plastic case, which by the look of it got damaged during shipping, but anyway. So for the biggest change is the brain of the board. By now, I think that all of you guys that are following this channel we all know that the Arduino Uno and the Nano are using the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which, don't get me wrong, is not a bad chip for the previous years, but for nowadays it's a bit slow. I mean, it works at 16 MHz and is an 8-bit microcontroller. It also has very few features. That's why we need a new and improved chip. So now the R4 is using the Renaissance RA4M1 chip, which is a Cortex-M1 microcontroller that runs at 48 megahertz and is a 32-bit topology. So the leap is huge, passing from 8 bits and 60 megahertz 
to 32 bits and 48 megahertz is a huge improvement in speed. It's not just four times faster, it's a lot more than that. Also, the memory passed from 2 kilobytes with the R3 to 32 kilobytes with the R4. And then the flash memory passed from 32 kilobytes to 256 kilobytes. Basically, the R4 now has more RAM memory than the other one had flash memory. Imagine that. Oh, and one more memory increase. The EEPROM also increased from 1 kilobyte to 8 kilobyte. So if you want to just store data, now you have 8 more times space to do that. And now let's talk about the I.O. pins. And let's start with the ADCs, because those are very important. We passed from 10 bits ADCs with the R3 to 14 bits ADCs with the R4. Now you might think 4 more bits is not that much, it's not a big improvement, is it? Well, in digital values, the analog grid would pass from 256 points to 16,000 points. So yeah, it's a huge improvement. Actually, this is such a huge improvement that with the R3 I was forced to use an external ADC, the ADS1115 of 16 bits, in order to get more precision. But now we have a 14 bit ADC inside of the chip, so already on the board. That's pretty nice, right? Actually, not just one ADC because this board still has six pins of ADCs or analog inputs. Oh, and by the way, another big thing are not just the ADCs of this R4, but the DACs. Because you see, this chip also has a 12 bit DAC. So now we are able to create analog signal outputs that are not PWM signals without using an external DAC. And for me, that's amazing. And still talking about the I.O. pins, a new feature for the R4 is a new CAN port. So yeah, this basically can talk now to your car. Just plug it to your CAN port of your car and get the data out of it. So it has I2C, UART, SPI, but now also CAN port. And by the way, this also has an HID, which no, is not a disease, but is a human interface device. So basically this could act as a keyboard, a mouse, or any other controller that you could connect to your PC via USB connection. If you remember when I've made my Stream Deck, I had to use the Arduino Micro because that Arduino was the only one that had an HID and you can use that with the Arduino Nano or the Arduino Uno R3. But now with the R4, you can. Okay, so enough with the I.O. pins. What other new features we have with this board? For example, we have an onboard RTC or real-time clock. Yeah, with the Arduino Uno R3, I was forced to use an external module which was huge in order to get a real-time clock but now we have that on board. Now we don't have a battery for that, so when you unplug it, the data will get lost, but if you keep it connected to a battery, you can have a real-time clock all the time, everything on board, which is pretty cool for me. So by now you can imagine that you have the ADC module, the DAC module, RTC module, and also a CAN protocol module, all in one, already on board. So instead of using a lot of money and a lot of modules connected to the R3 version, you already have all of that inside of this chip of the R4. So you save a lot of space and also a lot of money. Okay, so now let's talk about the power of this board. Now you can connect it to up to 24 volts as an input compared with only 20 volts for the R3. And now the R4 has, surprise, surprise, a USB Type-C connector. Finally, something that we were all waiting for. This is the future. So why can we connect 24 volts to this board and not burn it out? Well, because instead of an LDO, which is very inefficient and gets very hot to regulate the 5 volts, this board has a buck converter. Yeah, you heard me right. We already have a buck converter on board, which is right here. So that's why we can get efficiently to 5 volts without any LDO. That's amazing as well. Okay, so by now this looks quite amazing, right? But we have one big downgrade, and that is the maximum current per pin. Because with the Arduino Uno R3, we had 20 milliamps uh, per pin of current, which is already low enough. I mean, it's barely enough to light up an LED. But now we pass from 20 milliamps per pin to only 8 milliamps per pin with the Arduino R4. So yeah, that's a little bit of a downgrade. And not just that, but the total amount of current, so all the pins all together, pass from 200 milliamps with the R3 to only 60 milliamps with the R4. So yeah, we have a lot less current per pin with this device. And that's why be aware, because if you exceed this limit too much, you will get the magic smoke out of this board. And not just that, but this time the IC is already soldered in place to the board. I mean, with the R3, you were able to pop out the chip and change it with a new one. 
but we don't get that anymore because it's holding in place pretty tight. You have to desolder it and replace it with another one. You need, you need a desoldering station and a lot of work. So yeah. And by the way, the pin 13 is hard connected to the onboard LED. Compared with the R3 where they've invented something with an up amp to decouple the LED from the pin, now the LED is hard connected to the digital pin 13. And this LED already uses like 8 milliamps of current. So because the LED is hard connected to the pin, I don't think that you could use this pin anymore because it's already using the maximum limit of current. So yeah, that's a bad connection. And finally, along with all these improvements, we also have 14 pin interruptions instead of only two with the R3, which is very nice. And we still have six PWM pins, but this time are of 12 bits instead of 10 bits. So yeah, a lot more precision for the PWM signals as well. And not just that, but we are using six different timers for these signals, so you don't have to share the timers anymore for the PWM signals. And to finish the video, have in mind that we also have the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi version, which not just adds Wi-Fi to the board, but a lot more, because it has its own ESP32 on board, it has a quick connector, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and also an LED matrix, and a lot more. But since I don't have one, only the R4 Minima, that will be for a future video. I really hope that you like this update about the new Arduino, and if so, consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again, and see you later, guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it, and the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below, uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts, all this kind of stuff will support my channel, so thank you very much once again.